To make a good artwork, an artist needs a craftsman's hands and a poet's eyes. It requires skillful techniques to express a sense of beauty perceived from nature. That surely requires a poet's eyes and a craftsman's hands. Through the eyes of Jade Carver, Huang Fu Shou. In the 1950s and 1960s, rural children had to farm during winter and summer vacations. During the farming process, I was most interested about the interaction between insects and plants. I like to observe such things. Reflecting on it later, I found that my works revolved around the interaction between plants or insects. They are related to my childhood aesthetic experiences and naturally became elements of my early works. In other words, my early works are actually related to certain aesthetic experiences developed in the place where I grew up. An old Chinese proverb says, jade must be chiseled to become useful. Before being turned into an object, jade looks just like a stone. Therefore, before a jade stone is processed, even an experienced carver is 70 to 80% sure if it is jade. When I picked this material, even though it hadn't been opened, I could tell there was a crack in there. After I opened the material, there really was a crack which went from up here to there. In this case, based on the crack line, I judged that the crack would stop there and would not go further. So it was still a usable material which could still be turned into a big work. Although I judged the crack would stop there, my judgment was still uncertain to some extent. In selecting a natural material, such uncertainty is always present. After cutting open the jade like this, I now perform the final step, which is to cut off a small testing portion to see how much it can bear and whether it really meets requirements. To my gratification, it appears to have an edible texture. It is a joy to get the texture as desired. Incredible. Looks just like a tasty rice cake. Excellent. With a really hard texture and adequate toughness, it completely meets the stylistic requirements for my work. Both requirements are necessary. During the apprenticeship, I spent my holidays not only painting, but also visiting galleries and museums. I went to places that exhibited paintings, sculptures, statues, and so on. I visited the National Palace Museum in Taipei most frequently. Once in the National Palace Museum, I suddenly developed a dream and thought if it was possible to have my works exhibited there. Gradually, it became my dream. 
This dream has been motivation for me to become an artist. An exhibition showcases more than one work, so wherever I saved money, I would buy a material. Then more money for another material. If a material is wrong, improper, or even unsuitable, I would put it aside. At that time, I was quite scared and doubted if I should continue. Should I buy more? Should I try another material? I was really terrified. So in that period, I made a work called Door to Heart. One of the reasons to add a chain to that work was to convey my hardship. After making a cut, I found another small crack hidden in there. That is something you could never see on the outside. You only see it after making a cut. That is the crack. In a natural mineral stone, cracks are pretty common. In this case, a crack is not present in the original design. Therefore, the unexpected crack must be removed. The need to slightly change its shape makes me think of the possibility of bypassing a change or executing the original design. Both will be weighted and judged to see if the desired shape can be retained. Then I determine whether to finish or leave it. By leaving it, I mean discarding it. My appreciation for aesthetic beauty is in fact a direct result of learning, observing, or being touched by various types of art and culture. Besides jade carving, what I practice most is calligraphy. I learned to run a brush over paper in a speedy manner, and practice leaving blank and spatial arrangement. In some of my works, particularly the butterfly lovers. Curved lines were utilized. The straight and curved lines of jade, and even less curved lines, were used to create the main structure of that work. That was mainly and directly inspired by my love for Chinese calligraphy. That work was later found to be actually feasible. After successfully creating it, I was full of joy and realized that it requires not only a high quality material, but also inner strength to create such a work. It takes great inner strength to make such a work. Otherwise, one may give up because of fear and hesitation. Currently, it is a rough shape. The original surface of the material looks like this. The original weight of the mineral material was about 25 kilograms. The final weight of the finished work is estimated to be less than a kilogram.
carving is a subtracting of material. Whether to make a cut or not actually depends on the aesthetic judgment of the carver. For example, a soft, rough, or other type of texture is completely created by the amount of material removed and left. To apply jade carving skills to create a suspended and imbalanced state, sometimes one relies on instinct. Instinct tells you which portions to remove at the current stage. Instinct leads you to the next stage. Then you will finish the work entirely by instinct. Therefore, you should maintain good physical health and keep your instinct optimized. That includes maintaining a good physiological condition. So, it is important to exercise to improve blood circulation. I have long kept a habit of swimming in the morning. Many techniques were actually invented during swimming. To implement carving techniques at the most crucial timing, a carver must breathe smoothly or even hold his breath. The process of holding a breath continues for a long time. Then, another breath should be taken without shaky hands. Swimming helped to develop many skills. In a swimming session, I would sometimes dive into the water during a break. The optical illusion of the water surface creates a space for imagination. In fact, when we are on land or in real life, certain things can't be imagined. Sometimes it is hard to imagine a spiritual space. I sometimes sense a spiritual space. That spiritual space is entirely separate from reality. When underwater, I perceive my body and life differently. I maintain creativity well because of my exercise habit. Jade is a natural mineral. Each portion or component of its structure may be different to a certain extent. The difference may lie in its roughness or maybe hardness. Based on the difference, a technique that creates a delicate effect will be applied to a suitable position that is correspondingly delicate. For a carver or a creator to accurately convey his idea, it surely requires the right material that enables him to do so. Sometimes a planned out structure becomes ambiguous for a certain period. This means the design is no longer the same. The lines of the work are blurred, thereby creating a sense of ambiguity. If I'm not well prepared to fix a problem, it would not feel right to force myself to handle it. Possibly it could be badly handled or lead to failure. In that tricky situation, there is no point in continuing without any breakthrough. Then I would take a break. Sometimes I would drive, feel the speed of my car. 
and that it take me to a new place. The entire Taroko is just like a sculpture, one created by Mother Nature. I like this place very much. It always touches me unexplainably. Such a feeling of sensation is beyond words. Whenever encountering a bottleneck or being unable to maintain hand flexibility, I would probably visit this place where I may find inspiration. After a ride, the feeling of being stuck may disappear. Inspiration may strike again. To make a successful work, we must use the five senses to learn about the various changes and conditions of a certain material. We must be physically concentrated. Through our eyes, we see the most obvious changes or detect anything abnormal. Visual observation is the most direct method. When a tool touches a material, it produces clear, loud, or even low, blunt sounds, indicating the current condition of the material. The speed of carving is actually determined by the sounds. While the machine is in operation, I feel its vibration with one hand. Then I determine the amount of strength to be used to prevent damage or breakage. That entirely depends on the vibration transmitted through the skin to my heart and how firmly I press with the other hand. When a jade work becomes thinnest, I barely use my eyes to observe it. Instead, I use my heart and my skin to feel the material. Smell matters during jade carving my emery drill rubs against the surface of the jade and thus sometimes generates dust. The dust has its own smell. From my experience, the strength of the smell determines the force and speed required for carving. Therefore, man and machine become one. With deft hands and an agile mind, a machine operates well. Only when man and machine become one can we reach such a state. The ultimate state of carving is freedom. Such freedom must actually be developed from decades of daily practice. Freedom is at the heart of creation. With my artisan hands, I hope I can fully and freely convey the sense of aesthetic beauty perceived in life. This is what freedom means to me. Whenever applying a graver tool, I know by my heart that jade carving is a path without an end. So, I only focus on removing redundant portions of every jade stone and convey an internal state of mind through my work. This is what I aim to achieve.